Right. Okay. Good morning and welcome. I'm so glad you could join me in this workshop. I'd like to acknowledge that I am presenting this workshop from Noongar country. The traditional custodians of this land are the Nala Kala Buja people and I pay my respects to their elders past and present. Uh, now, hi, uh, I am Bronwyn Chomf Glidden and I am super excited to have you join me. I am the founder and director of Evertrue Solutions, and I help small business owners to be sustainable and viable, and we achieve this through permaculture. I have packed a ton of really valuable information into this workshop, and so we don't have a moment to waste. I'll get right into it, and I'm also recording this workshop so that you can request access to it and refer back to it later on if you need to. This is an interactive discussion. I've got you on mute at the moment, but you can raise your hand if you have a question. You can use the, the chat box to um, ask questions as we go. And I offer these free workshops uh, to provide value to small business owners and at the same time build an audience for my business and the services I offer. There's no hard sell, but I will take a moment later on to present my services and what it is that I do in case there is anything that appeals to you. And if not, no problem. I hope you enjoy the workshop. We are developing your cash flow projection with permaculture principles. There's two elements of education here, the cash flow, and I'll be explaining why it's so critical to the viability of your business, how to develop this process to ensure the long-term growth and success of your business, and also permaculture, well, where I'll be explaining what this is for those who are less familiar with what it is, and also how permaculture applies to a business function and how it's not just about gardening. One of the main problems that I've seen, especially amongst small business and sole trader operators, is the impact of having a really limited cash flow. When money is tight, everything is harder. Your business doesn't have the same opportunities for growth because it costs money to make money. And when you don't have the money to effectively run your business, it's a constant struggle and it's really hard to maintain this long term. In this workshop, I'm not even going to approach the topic of business finance or borrowing your way out of cash flow problems. It's such a trap and it's a whole other topic all on its own. What we're talking about here is the critical need to manage what you do have so that you can grow and remain viable and we can use the permaculture principles to achieve that. Now, before becoming a business coach, I ran a bookkeeping business for many years. I've been incredibly blessed to have received a great depth of experience in dealing with small businesses of all kinds. Without blowing my own horn, I'm a really good bookkeeper and I had a client retention rate of 93% during that time. Understanding the numbers came very naturally to me as well as understanding the people I'm working with. Using the template that I've shared with you, we can develop your cash flow projection using the business wisdom that is found in permaculture principles to ensure you run your best business. The principles, the ethics, the philosophies and perspectives that we use in designing a harmonious permaculture space also provide the answers to the problems we face in business. Now, the way that this benefits you is that you can have a super strong confidence in the processes that you run to use to run your business. Um, the movement and the approach of permaculture is to mimic and embrace and harmonize with nature. Nature doesn't make mistakes. It's us humans that stuff things up. But, you know, as we saw during COVID when the earth was in lockdown and well, the world was in lockdown and the humans stopped being idiots for a short period of time, the earth started to heal and put, started to put things right again, you know, from the air quality to the fish in the rivers. Nature knows what to do and permaculture is built on the wisdom of nature. So when you apply these principles to running your business, you can be sure that you have the best advisor of all. I've written an article about this using just one of the principles, which is use edges and value the marginal and how it works in a cash flow setting. 
which then inspired this workshop to demonstrate how it works. I'm going to drop a link to this. Uh, where is the chat box? I'm going to drop a link to this. Um, there it is. To this article in the chat box, just in case you haven't read it yet. Okay, so why is it so important to develop your cash flow using permaculture principles? That's really two questions. Why is it so important to run an effective cash flow projection? You need to keep your finger on the pulse of your, how your business is running at all times. Maintaining a cash flow projection will provide this, as well as other financial reports and things, but that cash flow is really critical in keeping your finger on the pulse and knowing how it's going all the time. Why is it so important to run your business with permaculture principles? It's a bit of a new concept, um, but as I've just described a minute ago, nature doesn't get it wrong. In the ocean of business advisors and consultants and experts that are trying to tell you they know what's best, it's easy to get confused and not know which one to go with. So go back to what you know. You can you go back to what you can depend on. And I'm not an expert in everything, but nature is. And I can rely on nature. And permaculture is the framework that harnesses everything that nature can teach us. As we go through this workshop, you've got your camera and your microphone off, but I still know you're there. And at any time you can ask a question using the chat box, you can raise your hand, I'm doing this demonstration with you, not just talking to you. At this point, I'd also like to recognize that not everyone here is running a business for profit. I've been in touch with a registrant who is starting a community garden. And my message to all not-for-profit groups is the need for that entity to be financially viable. You don't want to be dependent on donations and grants. You need to produce enough of an income from your own activities to pay your own way and further the cause of your organisation. So it's a good idea to treat your not-for-profit group as though it was a business. The same principles and operations apply. You should all have your template open that I sent to you with a Zoom link last Friday and then again this morning. Um, but I'm going to share the copy, uh, a link to that just in case uh, you don't have it in front of you. Okay, so at this point, so when you have your spreadsheet open, um, click on file and then make a copy and then save this spreadsheet to your, to, to your own folder. Um, and that way you won't be entering details into the, the main one, but you'll have your own copy of it. Um, and we're gonna be completing this template as we work through it. And so if you have any questions at any time, just let me know. Now, the number one reason for you to complete this cash flow projection and regularly maintain it is to make sure that your business is a success. I don't want... know how to put my hand up. Oh, okay. So, yes, did, did you have a question? Um, so we're using the copy, not the, not the. Not, not the original. I, yeah, I already made a copy, yeah. Yes, yes. So you save a copy because otherwise everything that you input into the, the main one that you first opened up with the link, um, if you enter anything into there, that everyone else that opens up that um, that document will see those those things. So okay. when you make I yeah, I can't see anywhere here where I can raise my hand, so I don't... Oh, okay, so um, uh, it's different depending on, you know, computer, laptop, phone, but um, it, on, on the computer there is a, uh, a section where, like, you know, you've got mute, video, share screen, uh, more, and then in more um, there is... Um, the spot there but that's okay what you've done now but by, by just unmuting yourself and asking the question is fine okay all so, right i'll mute myself again okay, okay all good okay um so now the number one reason to 
complete this cash flow projection and regularly maintain it is so that you can make sure that your business is a, is a success uh, because you want this business to be a viable source of income for your family. But getting to that point is a bit like riding a bike uphill. As long as you're putting in the effort and moving forward, you will get to the top eventually. If you stop pedaling, even though you're not doing anything specifically wrong, gravity will take over and you'll start rolling back down the hill. In business, there is no standing still. That plateau, it, that's a myth. Uh, you're either moving forwards or backwards. And if you feel like you're stuck or you don't know how to move forward, then I hate to be the one to tell you, but you're actually rolling back down the hill. Using this cash flow projection spreadsheet will give you the heads up of when things are going to get tight and you will have enough time to do something about it. When your cash flow is taken care of, your business is taken care of. And working with someone like me will help you learn what you need so that you are in charge of your business and you know where it goes. As much as I love to be self-reliant, no one can do this all on their own. No one is an expert in everything. We all need people to support us, even me. So get someone on your side who knows what to look out for and someone who resonates with what's really important to you. So let's get into completing this. Last month, I completed, uh, I presented a workshop on getting your costing and pricing right the first time. Uh, this is a good prerequisite uh, to have completed before doing this cash flow because we're going to be using a lot of the same information as, you know, so, like your, your business running costs. Uh, we're going to be using that again. But if not, it hopefully isn't too much of a uh, an exercise to get those figures in now. And if you don't have exact figures, it's okay. We can um, we can estimate and um, anticipate what they would be and just refine it as you go, as you get actual. All right. But if you would like a recording of that workshop, as well as the template that went along with it, uh, just get in touch and I can I can send you that as well. Okay, so I'm going to now share the screen. Hang on, bear with me one moment. Okay, so you're looking at the um, cash flow projection. Uh, this one is a copy that I've made um, to to complete during this workshop. So um, we'll we'll use this. So just wanted to make a note that I am not a tax or a financial advisor, and this projection has been provided as a tool for tracking your financial activity. Um, it does not constitute any form of tax or financial advice. Um, all right, so the instructions that we have right on the on the first screen there is we import a spreadsheet or a CSV file of the last three months of financial activity from your business bank account. Um, if you're not familiar with doing this, it's okay. Uh, it's a bit different with every bank. Um, every bank and the internet banking process to download a CSV um, or, or a spreadsheet of your banking transactions. It's a little bit different, so I'm not gonna go through all of them. You can contact your bank or you know get someone who's familiar with that. Um, I'm happy to help later on if, if that's um, necessary. Uh, but you can also, rather than you know exporting a, a file is the easiest and quickest way, but if that's not, um, possible for you for whatever reason, you can just uh, open up your transaction history and enter it in manually. Um, so now let me just share very quickly. This is an example that I've prepared. Um, this is something that your um, download could look like. It would have a date, a um, transaction amount, 
and then a description. Um, often it would also maybe have uh, beside it, you would have maybe like the running balance and, um, you know, there might be a couple of other reference or transaction um, reference um, details. But essentially, th these are the three columns that you need. You need the date, the amount and a description. So I'm going to copy this. This example is just for the last couple of weeks of November, um, but in your case, you'll be doing it for three months. Now, if you are a business that's just starting up and you don't have three months of history, that's okay. Um, just, you know, wait for us to get through this section of it and then we can look at um, preparing a budget of what you anticipate those costs will be. Uh, so, yes, so we are, yes, looking at the right screen now. Okay, so we come to this next tab, and there's a section here to paste the data that you've just um, copied from your download. Okay, and so you can see that I've got the, the columns aren't exactly what uh, it has here, but I'm just going to grab this and move that across. Um, so we're going to move this across now to every every to, to each category of what what it, what it belongs to. Uh, we're going to rename these categories. So this is just going to be daily sales, built with a capital. And I'll leave, the, in this example, I'm just going to keep it really, really generic. Um, and we'll, we'll come to these other expenses as we go. But first one, we've got a deposit, $500. That's from daily sales. We've got suppliers. So... In here, that would be just supplies. If, if you're a product-based business, um, that would be anything that you buy to create the products that you sell. So we just drag it across. Now, here's another one, fuel. These categories don't need to be in any order. Uh, you can just uh, make it up as you go along and um, and, and we can figure it out afterwards. Uh, now we've got another supplier purchase. Always make sure that you're in the same row. Transfer to personal. Okay, so if you are a sole trader, then the money that you use for your personal um, living costs, um, that's called drawings. If you're a company, then you would pay yourself wages, um, but as a sole trader, it would be drawings. Um, and interesting, sorry, not interesting, but uh, very important to note here that um, we need to always keep personal and business expenses separate. Um, that's rule number one for me um, is have a separate business account that's completely separate from your personal account um, because otherwise when you're doing your bank reconciliations, you're having to always be dealing with, you know, going to the shop 10 times a, a week. Uh, and, and that's just not necessary to to um, process all of those transactions. You want to be dealing with only business transactions and the personal money goes into the personal account and you can manage it however you want there, but uh, it needs to be kept separate from your business. All right, so now the next one we've got rent. Move that across. And we've got another deposit from daily sales. Oh, that's here. Another purchase uh, from the supplier. We've got bank fees. So that's another one. So um, bank fees are usually charged monthly. Merchant fees, it depends on the merchant provider that you're using. If you're using Square or something like that they will deduct their fee from like directly from the transfer that they put into your account. 
Um, and so if that dollar fifty relates to that three hundred and forty, if you're using something like Square, then um, you wouldn't see that one dollar fifty taken out. Um, but this uh, deposit would be three hundred and thirty eight fifty where it's already been deducted. So that's another internal thing to sort out. Uh, we've got supplies. And so you can understand here why I've just done a couple of transactions for a couple of weeks, because it is a process. This is something that you would need to, um, to do later on after this particular uh, workshop. Uh, now we've got insurance. Fortunately, many insurance providers uh, provide a um, pay by the month feature, which is great for managing cash flow because it's just a, a much smaller amount each um, month rather than a great big chunk uh, once a year. Phone and internet, we've got another deposit. We've got another supplier purchase. We've got fuel. We've got more merchant fees. Another deposit, another transfer to personal. We've got, so I'm just going to put all utilities together. So that's power, water. Um, and remember that a cash flow projection is different to your bookkeeping. Um, and so perhaps in your bookkeeping, you would have separate accounts for water and for electricity and for other things like that. Um, that isn't affected by this. Um, it does feel at first like doubling up, but um, it's it's a different process and serves a different purpose. Uh, what's that? Fuel, bank fees. And, and there is a way to... Um, to you know, put these together, to sy synchronize them. So you're not doubling up. And also uh, all this has been done on um, a spreadsheet because a spreadsheet, you know, you sort of create the template once and you can use it forever. Um, the accounting software programs that are available are wonderful but they cost um, and you know that depending on what you need they don't cost a lot um, but it is still uh, something to be aware of now that's three deposits in a row so I'm going to grab all of them at once no. um, so personally I use zero uh, not I'm not paid to say that by the way I just I love it um, and, and uh, currently that is um, thirty-two dollars a month for the for the basic, you know, with with just one employee, and so that's that's easy enough to manage. Transfer to personal. Got more fuel. More merchant fees. Transfer to personal. Rent. Merchant fees. Personal. That's the regular bank fee. Uh, oh, here's another one. Now we're up to the 10th category and I've got uh, subscriptions and personal development or professional development, sorry, my bad, professional development. Let me just quickly change that. Um, it is super important to maintain your professional standards, no matter what it is that you do, um, whether it's training or courses or anything like that. Uh, you always want to keep your skills sharp. Um, always make sure that you're offering your customers the best that's available. Uh, transfer to personal. Uh, 
And then cleaning, I'm going to drop that in utilities. Okay. So that's that little exercise done. Um, now, up the top here, we've got the totals and then divided by three to give you a monthly average. Um, because this is such a, a brief snapshot of an example, um, you know, these, the, these figures are not, um, you know, they're going to be different to yours. So um, this line here, monthly budget, this is like, th these are all, um, the green are calculations and formulas, but the yellow is where you, you look at that and you work out what your um, monthly average is. Okay, so now let's say, looking at the expenditure of drawings, personal wages, in this particular example is 2,950. So let's just use that, um, you know, well, let's, let's say $4,000 a month. Let's say the supplies, in this example, we've used uh, $1,750 in a couple of weeks. And so for monthly budget, let's look at, um, say, maybe saying that's 2000 Fuel, um, I'm just going to throw in some numbers here. Rent, say $1,000 a month. Merchant fees. I may have overestimated in my little example, but let, let's let's call it let's call it thirty dollars. Um, insurance, I'll, I'll stick with thirty five. Phone and internet, uh, one hundred eighty five. Utilities, power, water. All right, well that's seven hundred and seventy dollars there. That's between water, the electricity, and some cleaning. Yeah, let's stick with that. Membership. Well, now, um, making a budget, I'm going to call membership and other things that pop up. So $100 a month might be enough. Uh, $270 for professional development and subscriptions. Going to make that $300. Um, so the total of that, $8,920. Uh, now, so we'll make our budgeted uh, income at, say, $9,000 a month. So that we're covering all of those costs. And we've already sort of talked about how your uh, exercise is going to be a bit, um, a bit more involved than just a couple of weeks of, of an example. But I'll give you a moment to keep working on that if you need it. And uh, before we get to the next step, I'd like to share with you how I came to be here today talking about developing your cash flow and using the permaculture principles in your cash flow. Um, so you can keep working if you need to while I tell you this little story. Um, but I am going to stop sharing that screen and share. Where did the PDF go? There it is there. So I used to be a regular person, just like any old next door neighbor. I was running this tidy little bookkeeping business. I was contributing my little bit to the family income. And then I got this idea about 10 years ago that I could do something more. I can offer more to my clients. And so I'm pursuing these options that are available to me and it's trying and failing and trying and failing at lots of different things. Uh, one of them was I was trying to put together an online course um, that was, you know, made for people who would say, I'm not a numbers person, um, but we're running a business. Um, and, you know, it, it didn't work. And then there was another one that I was trying to do on um, being organized and productive and, you know, nothing really worked. Nothing seemed to fit. You know, it was incredibly frustrating. And I wonder, have you ever felt anything like that? Um, and then about four years ago, uh, my husband of 24 years just, 
left. Out of the blue, with no warning at all, and almost overnight, I was destroyed, abandoned, was betrayed, broken. And I'm not the first person to go through a breakup, and I won't be the last, sadly. And perhaps you know someone who's been through that too. And if you've been through it yourself, you know what it's like. And I feel your pain. For me, my husband and my four kids were my whole world. And it turned out his departure was just what I needed. It was just as necessary as it is to break a few eggs to make a cake or how a seed breaks to, uh, you know, a seed breaks apart to sprout. It was a new beginning. And I got to discover who I really am in a way that I had never done before. So as I'm putting myself back together, this quest to make a living and, and find something new was a lot more urgent. And and it was, it was at that time that I discovered coaching. So signing up to learn how to become a coach was, you know, the single most emotional business decision I'd ever made. Um, I knew I just had to do this. You know, I was... I was terrified. I, I used my mortgage money to pay the deposit on the training and then I freaked out. I burst into tears. I was as terrified as I was inspired. Uh, have you ever taken that leap of faith with something, you know, just jump into the unknown and just brace yourself? I thought it cost too much. I thought I couldn't afford it, but I was so committed to it. I had to do it and I took the action and I found the money and that decision was the start of this wonderful, beautiful journey that I have experienced because the process to learn how to become a coach means that you go through the whole coaching process yourself. For me, that was a process of healing and self-discovery and identity and forgiveness and growth and love and vision. It was infinitely exactly just what I needed right at that time. And it completely strengthened my faith in God and everything that was important to me. And I healed so much that I've remarried in December 2020. Now, that coaching and healing process uh, put me back in touch with my six-year-old self, who was at that time completely in love with the earth and all of nature. I'd always been a hippie at heart, but now it's really front and center. And I always had this deep reverence for the earth and a profound gratitude that everything that humans need for health and happiness comes from the earth. So now I'm working as a coach and given my background in small business support and it made sense to me to focus on business and to be a business coach. Only I had this passion for living in harmony with the earth and it felt like my passion wasn't completely aligned with, with my profession. And, you know, have you ever felt that kind of disconnect um, where, you know, you just don't know what's wrong, but it's just something just a little bit off. It's a bit like having a stone in your shoe that you just can't budge. And so in my journey to discover my nature loving self, I just, I stumbled, quite literally stumbled onto permaculture. And um, so permaculture um, is this wonderful um, framework of, of understanding. So I signed up to complete a PDC, a permaculture design certificate, without really knowing what it was. I just knew I had to do it to be true to my authentic self. And every moment of every module of that training reinforced to me that this is what I've been wanting to do my whole life. I just never knew what it was called. Permaculture is a design framework that harnesses the power of nature to benefit human life. It uses the wisdom of ancient cultures to work with nature, not against it. And it strives to live in harmony with the earth and maintain the natural order of things. Permaculture starts with growing your own food, but the concepts and the principles and the ethics and the philosophies apply to every aspect of life and society including livelihood and running a business. So I began to see the business wisdom that can be found in the permaculture principles. And I developed this understanding to help small business owners, just like you, to run your business the way Mother Nature would want you to. So this is it. This is the connection I needed to make 
you know, to really move forward as both a business coach and a permaculture activist. And I can use the platform of business coaching to spread the movement of permaculture and make a real positive impact in the world we live in. So I have now dedicated my life and my career to promoting the movement towards sustainability in the small business sector through permaculture business coaching and uh, developing business um, plans and conducting sustainability assessments and just to help one little business at a time achieve true balance and harmony and self-sufficient self-sufficiency and fulfillment to be sustainable so i am a bridge between business and permaculture to work towards sustainability and viability Viability is running a business well so that it is a long-term and dependable source of income for your family without burning out, without losing your personal life, without the trial and error until you stumble onto the right answer, just doing it right the first time. Sustainability is running a business well so that it is kind to the environment, making a positive impact and turning the tide of the collective impact of small business on the environment. And I really love how this understanding of permaculture combined with the decades of experience in small business support has provided this opportunity to help you create a truly sustainable business. Okay, so back to the spreadsheet. So we are going to share back here. So many screens. There it is. Okay. So here we are. And we're going to move now into the cash flow projection. Now, um, we have along here, this is a link to these figures that you've entered into the monthly budget. And so the budget is represented uh, at the beginning. So we've got $9,000 of budgeted income and then $8,920 of expenses. And so our closing bank balance at the end of the month, starting on zero, is going to be $80. Okay, but we need to put in the start date and the opening balance. So let's say we're starting as of the first of November, 2023. So this is where all of these will populate themselves with the month. Now this is assuming we're running a cash flow from the first day of the month to the last day of the month. Okay, so the opening balance. For this exercise, I'm gonna say that we started with a bank balance of $500. Okay. Now, we go through and you would do this weekly um, where you do the same sort of thing. Uh, import that that projection, uh, sorry, that uh, download from your internet banking and enter it in here according to the, uh, the categories that everything belongs to. Um, Doing it weekly keeps it small. Um, and, and yes, this is a, uh, a bit more of a hands-on uh, method as opposed to a lot of the uh, synchronized processes that are available through, you know, zero, where you can just look, link up a, a bank feed directly to the bank to your accounting program. Um, this, this is going, I guess, more low-tech. It is still, you know, doing it all on the spreadsheet. But by being able to do it yourself, you can really see how it arrives at the end result. And that really helps with understanding what it is that you're doing. When you have a, uh, a program that does everything for you, uh, it's robbing you of that um, opportunity to really understand uh, what's actually happening. So in here, the cells, um, you could enter a, uh, if you have a, a weekly total of what your sales were, you can just enter that in. Um, let's say equals, if, if it's just daily, you can just do daily and you can do it all in the cell by using the equals and saying, yeah, we've made sales of 200, 
plus uh, 750 plus 300 plus 480, and that, there you go. Um, and then uh, with the supplies, you know, and all of the transactions as you go, you would do the same thing, equals uh, 600 purchase and then another one of 400 fuel. You've got fuel three times. Uh, you put your rent. There's merchant fees. So can you see how this is... Um, how this is taking your, starting with your opening balance and adding your income and then uh, subtracting all of the uh, things that get paid out. Um, and now what this does is having this budget column and then the actual column will give you the heads up as you go how you're tracking against your budgeted um, expenses. And if you, you know, if you've budgeted, say, $4,000 in personal drawings, um, and then you actually find that you need, you know, say you, you take out $5,000 out of the business in one month, you can see that, that the impact that that has, with that minus, not 50, my goodness. You can see the impact that it has. And um, you know, if, if say let's say you had a really good month of sales and you went over budget and you had ten thousand five hundred dollars worth of sales. Um, let's assume everything goes according to the budget. And your actual expenses are exactly what you budgeted them to be. Okay. So in this instance, instead of being left with uh, $80 more than you started, we've actually got $2,000 in, in the closing bank balance. That's a good month. Um, if if the sales were down and you know you, you haven't quite covered all your costs and now we're we're minus. Um, now this is where the permaculture principle comes into it because we're we're as we talk about permaculture principles, so let me just bring up the PDF that I had of these permaculture principles. And I'll just, I'll just go through them very, very quickly in case you are not familiar with the permaculture principles that we're talking about. So, uh, this is a little um, imagery that, that I created. This is my representation of those permaculture principles. Um, we start with three ethics in the middle here, and that is, Earth care, where we look after the earth. And people care, where all over the world, people holding hands, being nice to each other and looking after each other. We all, we all share this space and we all call earth home. And then fair share, which is where um, the earth is divided into four because there's enough for everyone. Um, there is enough bounty and let's just keep things fair and equal. Um, and they're, they're the three ethics that provide a, uh, I guess, a, a lens to, to use as we go through all of the permaculture principles. So we start with this one, and that is observe and interact. Observe and watch what's happening before you come in and make big changes. Interact with things, not inflicting your will upon things. The next one is catch and store energy. And so that is, you know, solar panels, wind power, you know, catch the the energy that is all around us um, and, and use that. Uh, the next one is obtain a yield. 
Now, this is the one that first started that um, awakening for me of recognizing the business wisdom in the permaculture principles. Obtain a yield, to me, says return a profit. Make it worth your while. Um, whatever effort you put into doing whatever you're doing, there's, there's got to be uh, a reward at the end of the process. The next one is... Um, Sorry, mine's complex. So it's feedback, use and value feedback, and apply self-regulation. So being the self-regulation uh, talks about how we can, we're agents unto ourselves. We can decide for ourselves. We don't need uh, a boss or uh, an overarching authority telling us what to do. We can self-regulate and um, and choose the best path for the best path forward. And um, receiving feedback is. Um, listening and paying attention to how things and people respond to what you're doing. That's feedback. And there is no bad feedback. Uh, feedback is either a celebration of what you've done right or it's a heads up on something that you can make better. So all feedback is good. Uh, the next one is use and value renewable resources. Uh, if you have a choice between two um, resources, uh, a resource is something that you use to um, accomplish what you're trying to achieve. It, you know, where you have an option of resources and one is more renewable than the other, then go the renewable option. Uh, the next one here is um, produce no waste. Um, and that is a chicken leaving a pile of poo at the foot of a tree. The tree uses that poo. Um, and you know, even though it's it's a waste product from the chicken, it's been put to good use. So produce no waste helps us to realize that we can really um, make good use of the things that are waste products. And it also helps us to minimize what actually goes into landfill or gets discarded. Um, the next principle is um, design from patterns to details. The pattern there is of a, a honeycomb. I love bees. Um, don't like those things, but um, I love bees. And so honeycomb, they have a pattern, and that pattern is really uh, valuable. And I've found the use of patterns in my business as uh, the ability to develop a strategy, uh, to develop a, a framework. Develop that framework or that strategy, that overarching pattern first, and then get down into the details of what your um, what your business stationery is going to look like, um, and and all that stuff. The next principle is integrate rather than segregate. Um, it's, it's not really a clear drawing, but that's meant to be marigolds amongst the cabbages, um, as in companion planting. But yeah, put things together um, because together we're better rather than being segregated and separated from each other. The next one, yeah, that's a slow cooker. So use slow and small solutions. Bit by bit, um, line upon line, you can develop uh, the solutions, uh, find the answers, develop your learning and your understanding a little bit at a time. Um, this one, this principle was actually the hardest for me to really uh, take on board. Because I like things big and I like things now. Um, but that, I guess, is just a sort of human nature part of me. But in harnessing, I guess, bridling that um, energy into slowing it down and, and making it smaller, I've come to really appreciate that value of bit by bit, line by line, making uh, allowing things to develop organically um, and, and you know, the results that I've received by doing it slowly and a little bit at a time has been far more precious and valuable than if I had gone in big um, on day one. The next permaculture principle is um, use and value diversity. Um, we're all different and that's a good thing. Uh, we want to uh, celebrate that diversity and you know where someone does something differently to you um that is a good thing we don't want to be all the same 
that would be so boring. Uh, the next one here is use edges and value the marginal. Um, and this is the principles that I, I applied specifically, I guess, even as a standalone principle in this workshop, um, in this cash flow. Um, so in a, in a natural setting, you would have, I guess, um, uh, picture a, the one that I always default to is a, a forest and a lake, two different zones that are very different. Um, each has uh, animals and plant species that exist, um, but then where they meet, that edge where the animals come to drink and where the fish come to lay their eggs, there is a whole new um, whole new uh, environment going on there. That edge is where the magic happens. Um, and then the final principle is creatively respond to change. Everything is going to change. Nothing's going to stay the same. Things get bigger, things get older, things grow, the seasons change. Um, and, and in designing your business, don't do it to a, a way that's going to be static because that's not going to last. You need to be adaptable because things will always be changing. So um, I am mindful of the time. We're going to... Uh, finish getting through this really quickly. I have uh, very briefly been able to show how this um, cash flow works and how to input the information. Um, but that principle of uh, using the edges and valuing the marginal, that comes to this this line here, this is the edge, where where that edge, let's let's make it a little more nicer than the. All right, so ah, beg your pardon. Okay, the edge closer that edge comes to zero. You might think that's a bad thing. You're running out of money, but this is where the magic happens. When you start to run out of money, you get creative. You um, use your resources more efficiently. You make things last longer. You get creative and find different solutions for, you know, maybe a marketing campaign to drive up the sales. Something like all of these things are good things, and they were motivated and inspired by approaching this edge of running out of money. So that's a good thing. But to save you the stress of um, you know, running out of money, let's build in a buffer zone. Let's say that our buffer zone is having, for example, a $1,000 uh, backup. And you want always want your bank balance to have a minimum of $1,000 in there. Um, and, you know, it does take some time to build it up, especially if your expenses are so close to your income. And so it's two things, you know, you can look at all of the options available to increase your income and to reduce your expenses. Uh, you get creative, you do what's best for you. Um, but that, that intention there to develop this buffer zone, that provides another level of that interface, another edge before you get to the zero. And so as you're approaching that thousand dollars, it's like, oh, okay, we're hitting that edge. Time to get creative. Time to um, really actively do something to get creative and drive up sales and you know reduce expenses and make things last longer. And that's a good thing. You want more of that. And so let's value that edge by giving ourselves more of it. And the other thing I wanted to really um, promote is uh, in the history that we, we brought in this example, there were lots of different uh, transfers over to the personal account. It's great that there's a personal account, but there was lots of different um, small um, transfers across. What I promote and thoroughly recommend from my own experience is do that once. Do that once a month. Work out what your personal budget is and do a transfer once a month, and then you can build up your business bank balance 
and you can have that whole month to um, to build up your bank balance and then make that transfer and then you're right for a month. And then that gives you another interface, another edge where you have a month uh, buffer um, if that's your only source of income and you can see that you know it's it's not going really good, you've got you've still got a month to do something about it before that really impacts your personal expenses. Um, time's short, my goodness. I can talk about this for hours, um, but our time has um, come to an end. So I'm just going to really, really quickly, super fast, run through the um, services that I offer in case there's something that um, appeals to you and then uh, find out more. So um, of the four services I offer, uh, I run an online mastermind group. Uh, this mastermind group is a fantastic coming together of, you know, meeting up with people who are like-minded, who share your values, share your ethics, and, you know, if you if you come with a problem that you need help with, you've got up to 11 other brains working and brainstorming a solution for you. Um, and at, at the same time, you do the same for theirs. Uh, it's facilitated by me using a coaching process, and so there's a lot of coaching um, that goes on in a group setting as much as we can in a group setting without getting too personal because it is a group. Um, the one-on-one -on -one coaching that I provide, um, coaching is a very personal thing. It's a very private thing. And so the, the, the group the group mastermind is not an exact replica of coaching, but the one-on-one -on -one coaching, that is where we get real. Um, coaching, if I can explain it in five seconds, is pick a, uh, a result that you want and let's make it happen. There's going to be a thousand things that come up that try to stop you from achieving that next step. And it, with a coach, we work together, we figure it out, we work through it and we find the solution around, under, through, whatever it is, that obstacle and so that you can achieve your goal. Business plan development. Um, so a business plan is another must have. If you don't have one, you must have one. Um, that provides that framework, that pattern to how your business is going to operate. It's basically the rule book. And when you are a business owner, um, people have, including me, found it hard to not have a boss telling you what to do. And that accountability is hard to develop. Having a business plan, the business plan becomes your boss and it tells you what to do. So you can get a business plan created to um, tell you how to run your business, all the things that need to be done and the deadlines and everything like that. And the business plans that I prepare have that permaculture um, perspective woven into it so that all of those principles are, are really celebrated throughout the, the business plan. And then the last service that I provide is sustainability assessments. Now, this is more for mainstream businesses that are wanting to be more sustainable, uh, recognizing that their uh, business does have an impact on the environment and they're wanting to make it better. So it's a simple process. Um, and I recommend doing this quarterly as part of your quarterly review or your management review um, to do a sustainability assessment and just find what are the little steps that you can make to just keep that start that ball rolling and then keep it rolling to be continuously on a path of making your business more sustainable and viable. So how did I go squeezing all that into a couple of minutes? Um, I really appreciate your um, your attendance. Um, really thank you for, for joining me. And um, now I'd like to check in with you to see how you found this. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm going to share you a link to a feedback form. And I would really very much appreciate if you could open up this link and um, complete the feedback from uh, having uh, attended this workshop. Um, I find it very, very
valuable to help me um, continue to improve the workshops that I provide. But let's not let this uh, be the end of our connection. We've only just begun. I'll send you an email after this workshop um, with a link to the, uh, the recording so that you can go back to it, especially if you weren't able to get all of your, your history done, which you, know, you probably would not have been able to get three months of history all categorized. But you can go back to it and watch through it and um, go through and complete your uh, cash flow projection. And um, I'll include these links in there as well. So review your past three months of financial activity, or if you're just starting out, um, budget what you anticipate that could be, enter your start date and your opening balance, enter the actual transactions as they occur, um, and then update this weekly and reconcile the spreadsheet with the closing balance of your actual bank closing balance. Use the budget to compare how you're going and adjust as necessary. Look ahead to the end of the month and the end of the next month and see how things are traveling. Develop a buffer zone to increase your interface or your edges to provide you with more opportunities to get creative and problem solve whatever pops up. And look out for ways to incorporate the permaculture principles into your cash flow and into all the other areas of your business. Thank you so much for attending. I really appreciate your time and I hope to see you again soon. Um, until we meet again, may your business be prosperous, may your family be supportive, and may the pathway before you be clear all the way to your goals. Thank you. Bye for now.